Econ students, this is Mr. Clifford. Welcome to Econ Movies. In previous episodes, we learned about scarcity and choices. Now let's see how these concepts affect producers by looking at Disney Pixar's Monsters, Inc. The future is bright at Monsters, Incorporated. We warm your home. We light your city. Carefully matching every child to their ideal monster <coughs> to produce superior screen. Refined into clean, dependable energy. Every time you turn something on, Monsters, Incorporated is there. To produce things, we need resources, and economists argue that all resources are scarce. Sometimes these resources are called the factors of production. They are land, labor, capital, which is like the machinery to produce things, and then someone to bring it all together, the entrepreneur. This company has been in my family for three generations. Economists like to explain the idea of scarcity by drawing something called the production possibilities curve. The PPC is a graph that shows how an economy can use its resources to produce two different goods. So let's assume that Monstropolis can only produce two different products, Scream Energy and Sushi. This graph shows the production possibilities, the different combinations of the two goods that can be produced using all of their resources. As you can see, they can put all their resources to produce Scream Energy or they can produce all sushi, or some combination in between. But notice, they can't get any combination outside the curve. They can't put all of their resources into producing stream energy, at the same time put all those resources into producing sushi. So any combination out here, outside the curve, is impossible. And now's a good time to talk about the difference between consumer goods and capital goods. Consumer goods are obviously made for consumers, made for direct consumption. These are things like cars, odorant, and snow cones. Snow cone? <laughs> no, 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 don't worry. It's lemon. Capital goods are made for indirect consumption and are basically tools and machines to produce consumer goods. Now let's analyze the big problem in Monstropolis, the scream shortage. They clearly explain the cause of the shortage. Mm, kids these days, they just don't get scared like they used to. This means that the main resource to produce scream energy, the children, are less productive. The kid almost touched me. She got this close to me. She wasn't scared of you? She was only six! I could have been dead! I could have died! Now, back to the graph. What happens to the production possibilities curve if a resource becomes less productive? The entire curve shifts inward. Now, you should be thinking to yourself, I can see why we're producing less scream energy, but why are we producing less sushi? The reason why is because scream energy is a capital good. It's a resource. If you don't have Scream Energy, you can't even run a restaurant. Without Scream, we have no power. Now, what if there was some new technology that made the resources that produce Scream Energy more productive? That is, what if there was a way to get more Scream? Uh-oh, uh-oh, oh, come on, no, 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 come on, hey, 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 the thing is moving. I don't like big, moving things that are moving towards me. No, come on, hey. Hello to the Scream Extractor. Hello. In this case, the production possibilities curve would shift outward. We can produce more of both goods. But at what cost? Scaring isn't enough anymore. But kidnapping children? I'll kidnap a thousand children before I let this company die, and I'll silence anyone who gets in my way! Well, it turns out that you don't have to kidnap children. <laughs> Great job, Mikey. You filled your quota on the first kid of the day. Not bad, huh? You know, only somebody with perfect comedic timing could produce this much energy in one shot. Uh-huh. And the fact that laughter is ten times more powerful than scream had nothing to do with it. <clears throat> in the end, huge productivity advancements shift the production possibilities curve outward and lead to happiness and prosperity. <laughs> the production possibilities curve is the first of many graphs you're going to learn in economics. Don't give up if you don't fully understand the graph at first. If you stick with it, eventually it'll all make sense. 